All right, Alexander, let's answer the uh, questions from our live stream with Matthew Eret. And Commando Crossfire says, after Russia, after Russia reunites with renegade Western provinces, could Wagner be used to develop African security forces to withstand colonial attempts at subjugation? They're already they're already present in Africa. Wagner is already very present in much of Africa, and no doubt they will be continuing to provide their expertise, and they're doing so on a bigger and bigger scale. And Africans want them. <laughs> I mean, I, so it seems. I mean, you know, they they they're welcoming them into Africa. Yeah. Uh, Commando Crossfire says, can Western economies survive if African states start asking for fair compensation for their minerals and food stuff aside from the U.S.? Can the EU afford it? We can. We answer this question. We, uh... Yeah. Ernest Gibson, thank you for that super chat. Uh, Sancho Relaxo says, Matt, how do you see Canada's preparedness for the in- oncoming collapse? Resources per capita is quite high, but foreign they... companies own most of it with with the crown owning the rest, and Canada was the only country in the G7 without gold reserves. I, I think Matt answered. Yes, he did. He did. Yeah. Yeah. Commander Crossfire says, "I just want to shout out I Earl Grey. He, Mark, and Masha, the translator, are delivering humanitarian goodies to the kids in Mariupol. A very merry Christmas." Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We should have. Yeah, we've had lots of good Very programs important. with him. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Mr. Wonderful says Indian border guards beat off CCP aggressors at the Himalayan border with sticks yesterday. China is a paper tiger. We discussed this. We discussed this incident well, we, we yeah, over this, the course yeah. of the program. Yeah. 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 Commander Crossfire says it saddens me to see African leaders still meeting their colonial oppressors, but I guess they have to for now. Next time, have the West go to them. Uh- Absolutely, quite true. I think I think I, I share the sentiments and the and the perspectives on the future. Ernest Gibson, thank you for that super sticker. Toilet sauce says the West scrambles for Africa again. The first time was a tragedy. Will the second time be a farce? No, the, the first time was a tragedy. The second time will be a, both a tragedy and a farce because the leaders who did it before, this is the point I made on the program, were ruthless and predatory, but they were also, you know, serious people. Today's leaders will make a mess of it and make it worse. Yeah. Commander Crossfire says China wants to turn Africa into their next market, forcing them into developed consumer markets. They can buy and sell to. It's not charity. How dare they? <laughs> the Chinese are never, this is never, have never pretended this is any kind of charity. And I think the fact that they're straightforward about the fact that it's, they're doing it also in their self-interest um, provides Africans with some reassurance. When Tony Blair was coming along, he made it out. It was all charity. <laughs> and, well, we saw how that ended. Uh, Zayos says, Galimera uh, Apo, New York. What an incredible amount of information that I completely ignored. Very, very interesting conversation. Thank you, guys. Thank you for that, Zayos. And uh, EU Tech Health says, It is impossible as the Western world is run by corporations that like to use South America and Africa, including the Vanguard families. Those individuals in those continents are resources to be killed and used as needed. And I do not see it changing. Well, I think everything changes in time, and I think this will too. I don't think your characterization of the way things are is wrong, <laughs> that you express yourself in very, you know, vigorous uh, way, but I, everything changes. And the one iron rule is that you, any system of oppression eventually breaks down. Uh, Raisi says Russia and China needs to protect these developing African countries from the Western sanctions and security. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in their own interest. In their uh, own interest. Uh, what, yeah. hmm. Commander Crossfire says, should we expect another wave of genocidal carnage in Africa as the West tries to maintain power or will Russia, China be capable of mitigating the damage? I'm afraid that conflict is very likely. I think we did discuss this on the program. We can't assume that the Western powers will simply walk away and let uh, Africa go its own way. They clearly won't. And that does lead to wars. And we've seen how ruthless some people in the West are prepared to be when this kind of thing happens. 
Mr. Wonderful says one of the world's leading dictators, Australia's Dan Andrews, went to China and signed up to the Belt and Road policy. I mean, uh, the Chinese have never shown much concern one way or the other on the political affiliations or perspectives of, a, of, of any particular leader. Look at look at Xi Jinping. He's now meeting with MBS. Is MBS a Democrat? Mm. Uh, in Isfad says, while multipolar sounds good, each of these countries have signed on to the WEF agenda 2030. Does this equate to multipolar still adhering to WEF policy? You've got to decide which you think ultimately they're more serious about. Are they just signing up to the WEF agenda? Because from their point of view, it's a way to buy insurance from people like Klaus Schwab. In other words, oh, don't come after us. We don't need to be regime changed. We support what you're doing. <laughs> or is it is it the case that uh, you know they're they're really serious about this? I think in different countries it's different. I mean, I think in some countries, you know, they're just going along with it because, well, they have to and they feel they need to in order to protect themselves. In other countries, I'm sure they've been completely serious about it. And of course, Klaus Schwab's relationship with China is a complex thing because on the one hand, I think he probably says to himself, well, this country is a bit big. It's very powerful. It's, you know, going to challenge the kind of system I want to create. At the same time, there's no doubt about it. He does take ideas from some of the things the Chinese do. Uh, Liz Hill PR, thank you for that uh, amazing super chat. Thank you for a great discussion today. Thank Thanks. you, Liz, very, very much for that. Sam Whiskey says, is the ghost of the Eastern Roman Empire still hunting the West? This is a huge question, which we, we talked about a lot. Yeah. We answered it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about this a lot. Uh, David S. says, any sense of the outcome of the so-called Arab summit in D.C. at this point? No, I no. We as well. yeah. yeah, I think we answered that. Yeah, that we said the same. We're not sure. Uh, Sam Whiskey says, "How did the demise of the Romanovs affect the British crown?" Well, I think it it did frighten the British uh, monarchy. Of that, there's no question at all, and um, it probably did lead to the British ruling class agreeing to certain social changes in Britain that were intended to reduce the possibility of social tension. So it did have that effect. But of course, they also saw this as a huge opportunity <laughs> to expand their power. I mean, in the in the 20s, for example, Britain became briefly the dominant power in Europe, which people tend to, uh, tend to forget. And the greatest period of expanse of the British Empire was not under Queen Victoria, or, you know, in the Edwardian era. It was actually in the 1920s. This is the time when the British acquired Germany's African colonies, um, expanded into the Middle East, created a kind of secondary empire in the Middle East, established an ascendancy over Iran, where the Russians had previously been a rival, and based, began to penetrate also into Central Asia, into places like Tibet. So the British saw it both as a danger and as an opportunity about the family itself, about Nicholas and the children and Alexandra. Well, they couldn't care a figure about them. They just cut them off and uh, delivered them essentially to the Bolsheviks and uh, made it possible for them to meet their deaths. See, see, Jin, see for real, thank you for that super sticker. Lumpia Logic, thank you for that super sticker. Dimitra K says, Europe is doomed. Rest in peace. Thank you for that, Dimitra. Mr. Wonderful says, Lamborghinis in China, the peasants have been uplifted. Give me a break. Well, I don't think it's thank that straightforward. Mr. Mr. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Commander Crossfire says, aside from the Rwandan and Ethiopian leaders, are there any visible African political leaders or factions that can consolidate their people in power? Well, that's a good question. I, I mean, I I don't know. It's the short answer. I mean, that's a big question as well. It's a good one. It's the sort of thing that I think we'd need an expert to come along and discuss it with us and talk about this in more detail. Yeah. Commander Crossfire says, 
Is the neocon control of the information space too insurmountable for African states to overcome? Does low tech level help or hurt the neocon info control? Well, I think it helps them. I mean, in a sense, I mean, they, they like the technology to reach a certain level, but not beyond that, actually. Uh, my own view about this is that if you're talking about Africa and other places in the global south, you mustn't think of it any longer like the third world of the 60s and 70s and 50s and before. It, it, it's now becoming quite a sophisticated place. People are much better educated. They're much better informed, much more skilled in using technology themselves. Uh, and I think more difficult to control for those reasons. Barry Tremont says, I'm reading Matt and his wife's books, and I highly recommend everyone here, since most of you would appreciate digging into deep sea of history. Okay, Thank good. Thank you for that, Barry. Commander Crossfire says, can Egypt and Ethiopia mend ties, or is Egypt too afraid Ethiopia will overshadow them, both economically and politically? We discussed this at length. Well, and we as discussed a, this, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we discussed this, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hunger the Die Merchant says, I strongly disagree with your guests. What were the African and Middle East economies pre-imperialism? The West brought swarms of technology with them, such as the Indian railway system. Even the Ottomans brought in German industry and rail. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we discussed this during the program. And I mean, there's there's some truth to what you say, undoubtedly. And by the way, in case people don't know, Karl Marx in the mid 19th century made exactly that point he said that he was you know supposedly an anti-imperialist but he did say that the imperialists brought all this wonderful technology and maybe it was a good thing and you know that means that they'll now be involved in the international class struggle that was his perspective on it all but as i said before the technology and industry and all those things that are used by colonial outsiders as extractive technologies may not be the best technologies upon which people in Africa and wherever can build on in order to progress forward. At the end of the day, and on this I'm absolutely certain about, all of these countries would have de developed technologically, whether the West came as an imperial imperialist or not. If you have technology in the United States, in Europe, wherever, it will spread by its own nature to all of these places too. Uh, Linda Petit, thank you for that uh, super chat. Elsa says, how I always describe colonialist mentality, we are stronger, smarter, and also look better. So do you want, do you, so, so do what we say or die, still true for many countries. Mm, true. Toilet Sauce says, why are people criticizing China for expecting returns on their investment in Africa? What's wrong with that? I can tell you a lot about what's wrong with product sharing agreements that the West is so fond of. Absolutely. I mean, can I just say something? I mean, you know, the Chinese are say, acting total self-interest. They've never made any secret of it. Tony Blair talked about charity. Now, the thing about the way Tony Blair was talking about this thing was that you almost got the sense that he wanted Africa to remain poor because that made it easier for him to continue to appear all the time as he was giving the charity. Whereas for the Chinese, it's a totally different thing. I, I prefer the straightforwardness of the Chinese to Tony Blair is to Tony Blair and his approach, which frankly, as I said, I think is ultimately predatory. Ricardo Alfonso says, awesome guest. Thank you for that. Lakeva, thank you for that super chat. Evan Zamandi says the West has propagandized itself and population for a long time to the point they can't produce any practical policy in the current changing world. Absolutely, yes. Chris says, if you think via qui bono, then Europe, with the least amount of natural resources in the world, would benefit from green agenda the most. Yeah, I suppose that's right. But does anybody actually benefit? Stephen, thank you for that super chat. Island People says, much of the conversation just confirms postmodernism was a huge mistake. Thank you, Duran, for an interesting conversation. Yeah, thank you. G Dog G-Dog says, how much hatred towards China from those who have never been is straight up racism from the West? 
well, I, I mean, I th- some criticisms of China are valid, and I, 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 I go along with a lot of them. But as I said, you know, you, you've got to, you've got to be also look at this a little with a little bit more propor- sense of a proportion. Let me put it like in that way. Uh, Vilma S, thank you for that super sticker. Mr. Wonderful says banned TikTok. Um, Zach Nass says, greetings, gents. USA, as we all know, has become a cancerous, failing empire and is more dangerous to the world peace than ever before. Wouldn't the best solution be to simply divide it into five or six parts to ensure peace and stability? No, I don't think it will be. I mean, I, I, I just like all these ideas of dividing up Russia, to my mind, would only create more instability and would be very dangerous. I think the same with the United States. I personally want to see the United States remain whole. I want it to return to democracy. I want it to become a republic again. I think it can be those things, and that's what I would want to see. Jahangir says, uh, $46 trillion stolen out of India by Britain. The G7 must genuinely portray this isn't their plan. The perception is that the G7 still pursue exploiting the jungle. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> perception of many people. Uh, ta- yeah. Tatiana, thank you for that uh, super sticker. The Iranian Putin says Zelensky is going to need a ride soon. Uh, Hansom Kurt says... How can multipolarism save Haiti from the West? What would Haiti need to do, in your opinion? Invite Russia Chinese troops, join BRI. We, we talked about this, this a great deal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We talked about this. Yeah. Um, Vilma, thank you for that super sticker. Ricardo Alfonso says, "I personally know someone whose husband was involved in the plundering of Russia in the '90s. She completely believes that her class should dominate lesser peoples, including exterminating them, but she donates to charity, though." Mm-hmm. We talked talk about, about that. This as well. Yeah. David says, guys, you are a blessing to humanity and to my ears each day. Can't tolerate regular MSM news anymore. They are driving me insane. Blessings from a Balkan guy living in Sweden. Thank you, David, for that. Uh, Barry says, what events can bring a sleepwalking young generation into sensible minds to bring a brighter future? We answered this. I think we talked to Buta. That's so, actually easy. the last one we answered. Uh, Mr. Wonderful says, please, even Australia has rail gauge issues. Uh, Cam Lee, thank you for that uh, super sticker. David Chung says, U.S. passes new laws against 30 Chinese semiconductor companies. Can China overcome these new sanctions? Yes. I mean, I, 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 I talk about this. I've had, a, I've had a, actually more than one, but one in particular, uh, engineer. I call him an engineer. He's somebody who's been involved in the production of these things. And he's explained to me all about how they're produced and what the technologies are and how they're designed as well, which is perhaps the more important issue. Producing them is not particularly difficult. Designing them is extremely difficult. But both China and, by the way, Russia too, have the resources to do it. Uh, Edward says, just to note the popularity of the Duran, as of now, seven and a half thousand people are watching Sky News live. 5.7 thousand people are watching the Duran. Keep going, boys. You'll get through. Absolutely. Uh, thank Edward, you for that. Winter said, yeah, thank you. Uh, Winter says, uh, ancient culture was superior because people knew how to fly, teleport, levitate, heavy objects, heal themselves, live, live centuries without disease and die in peace. <laughs> Well, that's the future. That's that's the uh, future Island, as well. <laughs> uh, uh, Island People says, as someone in Gen Z, I can happily say that Duran has opened my eyes and assisted in shaping my own thoughts. Keep it up, Duran, and thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Island, Island Popsicle, sorry. Not Island People, Island Popsicle. Uh, Ricardo Alfonso says, these warming centers being set up in some European countries will be political gathering halls. Very yeah, very good point, actually. Very, true. very, very true. Yeah. Interesting point. Mm. Very good one, Ricardo. I didn't think about that. Uh, Taro Man, you thank you for that super sticker. Zesha, thank you for that super sticker. Summer of 1970 says, one for the road, Durant. Thanks. Thank you for that, summer of 1970. Uh, Rafael says, USA is going to finish like Cristiano Ronaldo. They're going to keep telling everybody they are still good and the world will be no. We are all set. <laughs> thank you for that, Rafael. Thank you. And Sparky says, great work. Thank you, Sparky. And that's Thank everything. you, Sparky. Wow. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you.